Wilms tumor is the topic and uh, Wilms tumor is a rather uh, interesting uh, cancer of the kidney and appropriately it's sometimes referred to as nephroblastoma. It usually occurs in kids that are less than five years of age and it accounts for about six percent of all cancers in children that are less than 15 years of age. So a relatively decent number and fortunately there's a 90 percent chance of survival for children that are diagnosed with Wilms tumor. Now a little bit about the genetics and the pathophysiology of um, Wilms tumor. This is uh, tested on the licensing exams. Essentially this tumor happens because of a chromosomal deletion of Wilms tumor 1 suppressor gene. So that WT1 is essentially Wilms tumor suppressor gene. And this WT1 is essentially localized to a specific chromosome and that chromosome is chromosome 11. So that's just one of those unfortunate things you just have to memorize. 10% of patients with Wilms tumor will have a rather rare but sometimes tested syndrome known as Wager syndrome. And Wager is just an acronym for the things that are involved. The W is of course for the actual Wilms tumor. The A in Wager syndrome is for aniridia, which essentially is um, absence of the iris, most commonly in both eyes. The G is for genitourinary abnormalities. And the R is for retardation. And in particular, what we're referring to is mental retardation. So it's rare, but it have, I have definitely seen it on the licensing exams when they have a question about Wilms tumor. The symptoms, if a child does have Wilms tumor, how will the child present? Well, for the purposes of licensing exams, there's three main things that they always talk about. The first is that you will palpate an abdominal mass in the child that will of course alert you to some possible problem and the mass will be painless. The next thing that the child will have is hematuria which makes sense because it's a tumor of the kidney and then the third thing they mention is hypertension the blood pressure will be elevated. So keep these three things in mind. In terms of diagnosis imaging of course like any tumor an abdominal uh, imaging tests such as an ultrasound or a CT is very appropriate and in terms of getting a confirmation you need to do a biopsy and the biopsy will show rather interesting uh, findings that this tumor contains uh, elements of bone, muscle and even cartilage so that will definitely be a very telltale sign of the fact that the child has Wilms tumor. And in terms of treatment, essentially surgical treatment combined with chemotherapy plus or minus radiation, like a lot of cancers. Well, let's take a look at some clinical vignettes at this time. A 13 month old boy is brought in for a routine checkup. His mother reports that he has not been eating as much as usual and is somewhat less active than usual. Otherwise, she has not noticed any problems. On physical exam, the infant is alert and interactive with language and motor skills appropriate for his age. Chest and cardiac exam are within normal limits. Abdominal exam indicates a large mass on the left side. The mass is deep and firm and its margins are now palpable. Lab tests including CBC, chemistries are within normal limits. CT of the abdomen is ordered. Which of the following diagnosis is most likely? 
All right, well, let's go through this. Willem's tumor, well, possibly. We'll keep that on hold. Splenic rupture usually occurs in some sort of setting of a trauma, like a kid falls off a bicycle, things like that. But there's nothing in the vignette to indicate that. Hodgkin disease is very rare in children that are this young. It's usually more in older kids. Leukemic inf infiltration is very rare. Um, and then Meckel's diverticulum presents with GI bleeding, usually um, bright red blood per rectum, which also would cause anemia, and his CBC was normal. So in terms of most likely, it would be Wilms tumor. And then finally, a two-year-old child presents to the pediatrician with hematuria. Examination reveals hypertension and an abdominal mass. Tumor is localized to the right kidney, and a biopsy reveals stroma containing smooth and striated muscle, bone, cartilage, and fat with areas of necrosis. The gene for this disorder has been localized to which of the following chromosomes? All right, well, we've got the abdominal mass, we have hypertension, we've got kidney, and then the biopsy is very characteristic showing these elements. So it's definitely Wilms tumor, but unfortunately that's not the answer. We have to now remember where, which chromosome is involved. Well, if you remember in the video, I wrote that the Wilms tumor suppressor gene is localized to chromosome 11. So that would be choice B.